Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And today we are back for another super, super easy fondant cake tutorial. If you struggled with decorating fondant cakes in the past or you just can't get that fondant perfectly smooth, which is one of the hardest parts of creating a fondant cake, then this tutorial is the one for you because it basically relies on a lot of textures and nothing has to be perfect. In fact, the more imperfect it is, the better it's probably going to turn out. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to cover up the top portion of my cake. I'm doing a three tiered cake, but you could easily turn this design into a one layer or two layer cake. If you've never worked with fondant before, it's basically like an edible Play-Doh. I like to use satin ice fondant. I find it works really well for me. Need a little bit of shortening into your fondant so that it gets really nice and pliable and it's the perfect texture. When you're rolling it out, just use a little bit of cornstarch. If you're making a single tiered version of this, you can skip both of these parts. But if you're going to make a tiered version, you're going to want to make sure that you have a lot of supports in your cake. I'm using some cake pop sticks or straws, but really you should be using something like bubble tea straws. It has a wider area, so it supports a lot better. You also want to make sure that you spread out those supports because you're going to be putting another cake on top. Once you lay out your straws and make sure that they're all the same height, you're going to place down some buttercream. Now I did crumb coat my cakes prior to this and I did leave them in the fridge for about an hour before starting any decorating. If you want to know how to crumb coat your cakes, please check out this tutorial in the right hand corner. After placing those supports in, I place a board on top with a hole in it so I can place a center dowel all the way down. This cake is going to be traveling, so I need to make sure that it's not going to move at all. Then I'm repeating those steps. Now it's really imperative that when you're stacking your cake, you leave it crumb coated and not covered in the fondant. Normally I do cover it with fondant first and then I stack, but because we're doing a bit of a different technique today, I'm leaving it just like it is. This is what makes this particular technique so easy because it's very, very forgiving. I'm not really measuring things super, super carefully when I'm placing everything down because it will get covered up. One thing I struggled with when I first started making cakes is making sure that everything was balanced and supported. So it's really, really important that you do add in all of these dowels and cake boards. It's also super important that you make sure the bottom cake board is supportive enough for all of your cakes. So always go with the cake drum when you're making a tiered cake. These are a lot thicker than your average cake board and you're just going to have a way easier time transporting things. If you go with too thin of a cake board, it's going to bend and some support issues could happen with your cake. It could also damage the decor. Now for the fun part. Don't worry if parts of the board are showing. We are going to cover all of that up. The trick to making this look elegant rather than just clumsy, I guess, is making sure that you get this fondant really, really nice and thin. You want it tall enough so that it creates a lip past the size of your cake or the height of your cake, I should say, but you also don't want it too, too high that it starts falling over because as we know, fun, it does stand up on its own to a certain degree, but if it's too thin and too high, it's just going to flop over. You can see here that it is flopping over a little bit, but that's because it's too high. So we need to rip that to size. I did steam my cake with a regular old clothing steamer. I use clothing steamers all the time on my fondant cakes. That way I don't have to add anything like shortening to the sides of the cake, nor do I have to add more buttercream. I just steam it very, very lightly for not too long. That way it just gets sticky enough so that the fondant adheres and it makes it way easier to work with. Then go ahead and cut off the excess. Now I went with, I would say a more conservative approach to this. I went and smoothed everything out. I was going to make the whole side of this very, very textured, which if you struggle with getting this really nice and smooth, go ahead and texture that fondant. Use whatever mat you have. You could also use something like tin foil, ball it up and then just indent the sides of the fondant and I think that would look really really cool and it just helps you in making things look put together without having to get everything super super perfect. Now this design does rely on making sure that your tiers itself have a pretty good shape so that that shape kind of comes through but you'll notice that things are really imperfect all over this cake. I'm kind of tying everything together with this airbrushing using an ombre effect and really directly most of that airbrush to the bottom of each tier. I have a really great edible airbrush machine linked down in the description box below, but if you don't have one or you don't want to invest in one quite yet, then go ahead and use some petal dust on there. 
You can also skip color altogether and just skip straight to putting this kind of golden edge on this. I thought it just looked a little bit unfinished when I left it. Depends what look you're going for. So I decided to add on that gold with just a little bit of luster dust mixed with vodka. I'm making my super, super simple roses. I think I have a tutorial on this. If I do, I will put it up in the right hand corner and you can go and check that out. Basically, you just cut out the shape. You thin out the petals with the balling tool and then you roll it up and there you have it. Really, really quick roses. If you guys saw my short, you know that I finished this cake in about two hours. That was all the decorating. Of course, I baked it beforehand. So if I count all the baking time, probably took me about three hours in total. Now I'm putting on these edible butterflies. They're great. Obviously, I didn't print them myself. I just bought them, but they are 100% edible. Then I added a little bit of edible glitter on there. And here is our finished cake product. Like all of the desserts I make on this channel, I gifted this one, but let me know down in the comments, how much would you charge for this cake? And I will reveal in a short how much I would charge for this cake. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye.